Welcome back to another episode of my people. Today we are going to be hitting pull exercises. And with this, I'm gonna be working on functionality, hypertrophy, and absolute strength. Let me tell you why each of those are important. Functionality, you need that for everyday movement. It doesn't matter what you're gonna be doing. In regards to pulling, you never know if you're gonna to need to pull your car out of the mud. <laughs> <laughs> More seriously, having spine functionality and shoulder functionality goes along with your ability to pull in everyday scenarios. Which for your everyday activities, whether you're walking, you're swimming, you're running, you're throwing, lifting things up, pulling things up from the top cabinet, you need that functionality within your spine and your shoulders so that you can operate effectively. The next thing we'll be looking at is hypertrophy. For those of us that are trying to build our physique, whether you're in bodybuilding or you just want to look better and more aesthetically pleasing, hypertrophy is going to be a good way to go because it'll help you define your muscles just that much more. When it comes to absolute strength, who doesn't want to be stronger? Movements that'll help you with absolute strength will help you overall with your hypertrophic gains as well as just your overall result in the gym. The heavier you'll be able to lift, the more your muscles will be able to hold, and the more stress your joints will be able to sustain in any given movement at any given moment. So without further ado, let's warm up and then we'll get started. So if you know me, one of my absolute favorite ways to warm up is with foam rolling and stretching, and of course, adding some mobility to that. We're gonna warm up our upper thoracic spine and our shoulders with this movement, so follow along. You wanna take a light weight. The key with this is having a light weight in the foam roller on your upper back. You want to extend across the foam roller and push the weight above your head. And there you can stay in that position, or what you can do is slowly move the weight towards you, push up, and then bring the weight back down. You do not want this to be strenuous. You are warming up. One exercise that I like to do that's gonna warm up my shoulders, my core, and my scapula is going to be shoulder retractions while in the bare position. Check this out. So I start this position on all fours and the next thing I do is just raise my knees off the ground. Now my core is engaged. From here, all I'm doing is bringing my shoulder blades together and pushing them apart together and pushing them apart. I'm gonna hit this for a couple reps just to warm up before we begin activity. As you see, it's just a small movement. There's not much going on there. We're creating fluidity and stability. Give it a try, let me know how it works. All right, so now we're gonna get started with some functional strength. We're gonna do a vertical pull first. We're gonna do two different grips, pronated wide grip pull up and then a neutral grip pull up. The difference between these two is the pronated wide grip pull up where it's on the lats the traps, the posterior deltoids, the brachialis, and the brachial radialis. Meanwhile, the neutral grip pull-up works on the lats, posterior deltoids, the rhomboids, the teres major, the upper and lower traps. So depending on which muscles you want to work or emphasize, you should try it out. Also, one grip is going to be stronger than the other, so you might as well just work both, especially since it's just for functional strength. One of the things to make sure of when performing these movements is to not bust out the movement and to get full range of motion. You don't just want to pull yourself up anyway. Really focus on what muscles you should be targeting. And if you can't do it, then use an assist machine. I'm not using the assist, but you can do it. <laughs> when performing this movement, we want to execute the concentric contraction, which is us pulling up, holding it for a second, which is the isometric contraction, and then slowly coming back down, which is the eccentric contraction. We're doing that in both grips. Double the burn. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you a way to do rows that you've never done it before. There's things that you need to look out for when performing this movement. Performing a row, especially on a machine, you want to be in control of your scapulas. And the movement that you should be performing is protraction and retraction. Additionally, when you protract it, which is bring in the shoulder blades, you want to depress them as well. So that way you have full control of your shoulder girdle and the muscles that involve it. And it helps with complete activation of all the back muscles that you're trying to target. Next, the rev scheme that we're going to hit. Pick a moderately heavy weight, maybe 70 to 80% of your max row, and you're going to perform 15 reps. Every 5th, 10th, and 15th rep, you're going to hold for 5 seconds. This is going to burn. I'm going to do it right now. You're up next. Another thing you need to be aware of is when you're pulling, that you're not pulling up here. To assist you with the protraction and depression of your scapula, you want to pull down towards your pockets. <laughs> oh. 
If you don't hunt, you don't eat. Right now I'm about to hit some lap pull downs. That's a vertical pull. And we are going to work on the rep scheme of five. Of course, death comes in threes. So we're going at 15 reps, every fifth, 10th, and 15th rep. We're gonna hold for five seconds. <sighs> this type of training is grueling, but we get results, as you can see. The one thing to keep in mind is that we're still working on the scapula protraction, retraction, and depression aspect, but also you want to work on targeting your lats. A place where people make a mistake is they grab the handle wrong. They grab it with their forearms in front of them rather than in line with them which is how the machine is made. When you grab it too far in front, it's gonna mess up your grip. You're gonna to start to feel your forearms give a lot sooner than what they would. Since we are gripping and the weight is gonna be heavy, your forearms are expected to fatigue, but the positioning that you align yourself with will help you overall. But the positioning that you start with will determine how soon you fatigue. And of course, the weight and other factors as well. Let's get it. So now we're gonna build absolute strength. Way to build absolute strength is by starting from a dead stop position. You only want to incorporate the muscles that you are meant to be using in the movement. That means you don't want to jerk, you don't want to add any outside movements, have any outside forces, or have any instability assisting you in the movement. Absolute strength comes from a dead stop position and perfect form. The weight that I'm going to be using for this exercise is heavy. So, as I start to tire, fatigue will set in and you will notice it. And that will help me gauge how many reps that I actually can perform versus how many I want to achieve. The goal right now is 12. I'm gonna do bicep curls, but I know you have not done them like this before. Try them out. You'll get the same exact results, and you'll get a little something like that too. Ha. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to pick up the weight, have my wrists already supinated, which just means palms face up, and I'm gonna get the best bicep pump by activating my bicep brachii and my brachialis. Both of those muscles are located right here from your humerus down to your forearm. How we're gonna activate this is by keeping the wrist supinated and having one arm at 90 degrees. While this arm is at this 90 degree angle, the opposite arm is going to be curling. Once we get to five, that arm goes to 90 degrees and the other arm curls to five. We're doing two rounds on both sides. This sustained contraction is called an isometric contraction and this stimulates the muscle. Since we'll be adding repetitions in between that contraction, these muscles will surely fatigue and ultimately give us the best pump of our lives. You'll benefit from this exercise because we'll be targeting the brachioradialis, which most people do not target when they're doing a bicep or arm workout. The brachioradialis goes from the humerus to your forearm, and it works when you have your hand in this neutral grip and you flex your elbow like this. Now, it'd be too easy if I just said, let's just do this, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this elbow flex to 90 degrees, and we're gonna knock out five reps on this side, and then we'll flex this one to 90 degrees and knock out five reps on this side. One important thing to note when doing this is not to grab the weight all the way up where the weight attaches to the bar. You wanna grab it right in the middle. That'll increase your grip strength and your overall strength of your arms. You know how you can tell when you're getting the craziest bicep pump? When you can't even touch your shoulders. Like my shoulders itch right now. I can't get there. I need help. Somebody please come help me. If anybody else is getting pumps like this, please let me know. Dang. I'll admit, this is pretty advanced. So if you can't do it with a medicine ball, just try doing it without it first. So to walk you through it before I wrap it up, after you're in your pull-up position, ideally you wanna be able to start with your feet on the ground so you have more control of the medicine ball within between your legs. But afterwards, you hang and you crunch all the way up and down. Let's get after it. So that wraps up our pull workout for today. Let me know how it works for you. Did you work to fatigue? Did you find out that you could fatigue a lot sooner than you thought? Did you find out you didn't have functional strength? Anything, if you learned anything, let's talk about it below. And if you have questions, let's also talk about it. I'm gonna hit some cardio and I'm out of here. Until next time, in Nandizi we trust.